What is going on guys and girls welcome back to CK2 Elder Kings and Grum of Winterhold and before we uh, go forward today uh, there's plenty of things that I have to do and first of all we need to check out the blood of the dragon now currently there's still two people left that have the dragon blood in their veins one of them is our granddaughter and the other one is Lord the six-year-old Lord Rissing um, there's not too much we can do about him, he's our great-grandson, but since he's landed, um, yeah, we can't really do anything to him. He's very far away as well, so, um, we'll just disregard him for now, especially because I don't have any females uh, that can marry him. But, his, interestingly, heir, um, but his, his, uh, I guess, aunt, um, she would be willing to come to our court so of course i'm gonna invite her and then we'll see if we have an opening to marry her she was initially i initially had planned to marry her off to my son rorik but he decided he wanted to join the faith in fact i should probably have him join oh he's he's a member of the cult of the ancestor moth okay yeah so he did join a religious cult all right fine um but maybe once our son's first wife uh, dies, he, uh, maybe he can marry our granddaughter, maybe that works. Um, I haven't really fully decided yet, but once she's at a court, we have all all the options, basically. So yeah, that's the first thing I wanted to do. Secondly, um, there are several uh, independent thanes all around our land. So we've got the Prince Mulgrum of Eastmarch for once, and then we've got these two thanes of Morthal and Snowhawk, respectively. Uh, they're independent, and they would actually accept vassalization. So, uh, I mean, I just see no reason why we shouldn't. We want to form Skyrim, and we can do this without conquest. Um, and that's, you know, that's free real estate, basically. So let's go for it. Uh, we'll offer vassalization for these two. And now, I'm not certain if this was the dude we had imprisoned. I assume that's not the guy. Um, but either way, he's going to accept vassalization as well, so... Uh, we'll send that offer to. Um, for a second, we're going to stay in Eastmarch here because I have uh, thought about creating a new duchy, the Duchy of Eastmarch, and I want to give that one out to um, our so-called wardens of the of the East. I guess I know this doesn't, you know, this doesn't exist in uh, in 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 this mod, um, but I feel like it would kind of fit. So I'm going to give this title to our Khajiit over here, uh, the the Rodo family, um, Thane Shani. Uh, he does, I mean, he is technically uh, a heretic, so we don't like him as much. As you can see, he actually hates us quite a bit, interestingly, but that's because he's ambitious. Um, we dislike him as well because we're zealous, but at least this guy has sympathy for the Netic Pantheon, so I feel like it's okay. It's okay. So, anyways, we're going to grant him the uh, Jaldum of Eastmarch. Our council uh, is is alright with it, so that's fine. Uh, we'll give it to them, and they will basically our wounds of the East. They will be our wounds of the East, and they will protect us. And especially once Eastmarch joins, uh, their domain will grow more powerful. Okay, so that's that. Then I also have the Duchy of Ironbind, or the Jaldum of Ironbind, under my control, and I want to give that to the Thane Jodgrad of Frostflow. So uh, let's grant her this Jaldum. Very good. Um, and she's actually married to the Thane of Ironbind right here. And so their daughter will inherit all of these titles, which is perfect. So we're creating more powerful vassals, but that's okay in my opinion. Um, yeah, what else have we got? Let me quickly check this out. Oh yeah, right. And then um, we can actually go ahead and build a shrine in Winterhold. Now, this is basically the hospital that we know from regular CK2. Uh, it's now called a shrine. I'm not sure why, but it basically does the same thing. Uh, they're constructed to increase the disease resistance of a, co uh, of a county, and uh, so we have less epidemics and uh, chances of depopulation are much lower. And even though recently we haven't had too many outbreaks, but I remember a time where we had like typhoid fever, crimson plague, uh, consumption and all kinds of other diseases just rampaging through our country and especially Winterhold. So that's definitely something that I probably should have built much earlier, but uh, better late than never. So let's 
start the construction of a shrine here. And also, you know, a shrine um, seems like something that a religious person would build anyways. So, yeah. Anyway, that was that. Um, and, yeah, now I've, I've basically done what I wanted. Uh, one more thing I wanted to check out was the guild hall. Um, where we can study a specialization, right? So I think we started learning the ways of the Crusader, and I think I would just continue that. I'm a little bit disappointed that no matter which society you join, you seem to be able to have the same options of specialization. That's a little bit unfortunate. Um, because I thought, you know, for example, if you were to join the Greybeards, you would be able to become a monk or a priest or stuff like that. But not necessarily a battle mage. But it seems to be, there seems to be no differentiation at all. Um, although, maybe Wayfarer. Maybe Wayfarer is new, I don't know. But I doubt it. Actually, I doubt it. Um, so let's go back. I want to go with the Crusader. I think that kind of fits the best. So let's go for that for now. And, um, yeah. Now, before we go forward now, I would like to just have a little bit of a look around Tamriel because I I realized that I've been very focused on Skyrim. And so we've obviously seen the growth of Winterhold and the decline of East March and Whiterun. Um, but yeah, other than that, we haven't really been checking out the other realms. Uh, so we know that the Rift is the second strongest a Nord Kingdom after Winterhold, and so far I don't think we've been at war once, but that's likely going to change in the future. Uh, other than that, we have the Kolobian Estates, who are incredibly powerful and have expanded significantly um, over, well, the, the Kolobian Highlands and the Heartlands, but also they have expanded into the Nord territory, and we're not quite ready to face them right now, I think, but at some point, I feel like we're going to have to push them out. Uh, they're currently ruled by King Olvers the Boulder, and interestingly, they are of the House of Cyrodiil, um, and they have the Riemann bloodline, uh, the uh, founder of the Second Cyrodiilic Empire. So this is rather impressive, and uh, if someone is able to form uh, Cyrodiil, then I suppose it's going to be this family, um, and perhaps even this king. I mean, he's really, really powerful. Um, now, they do have a relatively strong contender to the south, King Severio, the Mutilator of Nibonai. That is also a relatively large realm, at least it looks large. Then, of course, we've got Elsewhere, which is rather powerful. We've got Alinor, which I believe did not start out with this territory. So they have actually uh, pushed into, which is, uh, into Valenwood here. Um, and uh, they might even take over all of this. After all, if they take over these provinces, they could form the Old Mary Dominion. I doubt they're going to be able to do that, but perhaps that's going to be interesting. But yeah, those are the realms of, well, men and elves and so on and so forth. But one thing I also wanted to point out is that we have the Frozen Horde to the north over here. They're currently fighting um, a dragon cult uprising, interestingly enough, that they're also seemingly going to lose. But yeah, what's interesting about them is that they are, I mean, you can see it, they're undead skeletons and necromancers and yeah, just overall unpleasant people to be around. There's also some skeletons around, which I find interesting. And there's two, two outposts of, of humans or two uh, last bulwarks of humanity. There's Chief Zolst on the west and then there is Chief Grimbald on the east coast of Atmora. Uh, but yeah, those are the only two human uh, outposts, as I said. The rest is undead, basically. So we'll have to see what happens. I don't know what the Frozen Horde does. Um, it kind of reminds me of the White Walkers, to be quite honest. And I don't know if they can leave Atmora. Uh, but if they, if they do, well, I think one of the first places they will attack would be our realm. So we're, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. For sure. Yeah, that was that was all I wanted to mention so far. And um, yeah, I'm also thinking about going to war again. Um, we could declare another Inquisition on Queen Draza of Skarhammer. She's following some weird cult. I don't even care what it is. Uh, we'll we could declare the war and go for an Inquisition against Star Skarhammer and get a few more territories under our control. Last time it was a bit strange because we only got one 
province that I then gave to our nephew. Uh, so I don't really know, but I think we have to occupy these territories. Um, so either way, uh, it's what I'm going to be doing next. And the only thing I want to wait for is for all of the... Uh, all of the diplomatic actions to uh, finish. Okay, so the Thane of Snowhawk has accepted and become a vassal. Our granddaughter has arrived, which is very good. She's 21, so if we could get her to marry one of our family members, that would be amazing. She's lustful as well. She is homosexual, but still, I think that lustfulness offsets the penalty from being homosexual. Although, it actually doesn't show that there is a penalty. Huh. Interesting. Anyways, let's move on forward. Okay, so uh, Thane Holda has accepted to become a vassal as has Prince Mulgrom. Alright, very good. Now, I think we're going to immediately make Mulgrom a vassal of Shishani, who really dislikes us. Yeah, he wants the control over there. Okay, let's... um. Let's transfer vassalage of East March over to you. Thank you. And yeah, actually, he now likes us quite a bit. Perfect. Okay. So I hope that he's going to be, yeah, not troublesome because then we'll have to remove him again. That would be very unfortunate. But yeah, anyways. Okay. Let's move on forward. Mm, and yeah, right. Let's declare the war. You are currently attacking the Skarhammer Conquest of Morkath, which I don't know where that is. Is. Oh, that's over here. That's fine. You're fighting each other, and it doesn't really matter to me because we're going to declare war, and we shall defeat you. Actually, you know what's interesting? This dude is just a count, but he has all of these provinces under his personal control. I would love him to become a vassal, but he's obviously at war, so that's a little bit problematic. Anyway, let's go ahead, declare the war, and go with an Inquisition. There you go. And let's raise all of our men. We've got so many men at our disposal. We have one of the largest armies in uh, in Tamriel, actually. Believe it or not, uh, it, 4,000 men is actually one of the largest armies uh, available right now. So that's that's amazing. I mean, just uh, as a comparison, the Colobian estates have like 1,000 men and no money. So we're really in a good spot. We can also... Uh, right, we can call our tribal vassals. I'm not going to be doing that. They, they won't be able to... Um, contribute much anyways. And yeah, our sister is our heir again. That's very upsetting. I don't want her to be my heir, to be <laughs> to be honest. Um, but oh well. It's fine. Uh, right. One thing I would also like to do real quick is have a quick look at our queen, Julia, because she has actually improved as well. Um, she has. She's now a master trader. Uh, she's become an engineer as well. She's intrigued by the mechanics of the world around her. And how she can use mathematics and so-called science to improve the lives um, of her and others. So, uh, yeah, but that's not all. She also started to become a journeyman barbarian. Um, so she's skilled with an axe, sword, and a tavern stool alike. So she's taken a bit more of a fighting attitude. And that may be due to um, our interest in war. So she's taken the same interests. Uh, it seems. And her personal combat skills at 11. That's actually not too bad. I mean, we're still much better. But we've been focusing on war a lot more um, than our wife. So, anyway. Uh, we lost a few troops. Let's go the other way around, maybe. Don't really want to lose any more. And we got to be careful. Because there is a chance that our nephew gets captured here. I hope it doesn't happen. We'll have to see. Anyway. we got to wait for our troops to unite. Um, alright, so they've already taken Orothheim. You know what, that's just the way it is. You, can you... Actually, I, I guess now you can probably just move over there, that's fine. I don't think you're going to be attacked. Especially because you are busy fighting another war. A, a two-front war, so to speak. You have also imprisoned your husband. Smart move. Um, but yeah, look at this, 4,000 men, that's just insane. Uh, so yeah, Grom is going to lead... We'll have one of our courtiers here. Then we'll have Thoring of Whiterun on a flank. And then who else could lead? Uh, Hyotha the Gracious. She's a commander of Winterhold. Who is she? She seems familiar, but I don't know exactly who she is. 
And then we have our uh, tribal vassal. We'll actually have him lead troops as well, even though he is wounded. And I do want to see... Alright, our marshal... I kind of want my marshal leading troops too, actually. So let's have our marshal lead this flank. And we'll have you as a sub-commander. That's perfect. Alright, cool. So let's get... Um, to Orothime to liberate our provinces. And we could improve our grandson. Man. I don't want to. I, I He just kind of have to learn on his own, honestly. I, I just don't want to have these negative traits. I really dislike that part of education. But yeah. Anyway. Okay, we've retaken Orthime. You have won your war, so now it's just you versus me. So technically, you only have a thousand men. Um, flaming. Oh wow. Okay, this is interesting. The Falloan bloodline, Red Eagle or Falloan in the language of the Reach, was an ancient king who, armed with a flaming sword, rallied his people and drove back the armies of Cyrodiil in the First Era. Over time, accounts of Red Eagle have become distorted and embellished, but they seem to be based on truth. The Imperial Chronicles of Empress Hestra mention a rebel leader who was eventually cornered and slain in battle around the year, uh, whatever, at the cost of a full legion of men. Curiously, stories of a similar king and his legendary blade appear in other ancient myths of the Reach. But yeah, look at this. They have a significant amount of lands, so they definitely need to be cut down, that's for sure. I'm pleased to report success of my mission to Skyborn. The majority of the population has converted. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Now, I'm going to send you to Orothime, actually. And then we can send them over here and convert yet Morans as well. But we'll we'll do that later. Okay, so we're currently... We have to siege down a sub-holding, which we have done now. And we're going to crush their main forces. That should be absolutely no problem for us. And we've got more troops, better commanders... Um, whoa. Alright, I gotta slow this down because otherwise these troops will be able to escape um, all the time. And that's gonna be freaking annoying. They are- they do seem faster than us as well. Oh shit. Why do you stop movement? I don't get it. So annoying. Alright, let's go to speed 4 then. Let's try and catch these troops. Let's, let's have them move to Rorik's stat and then we should be able to catch them, I thought. Apparently not. Come on. Alright. Really? We can't catch you? Damn it. Anyway, we can actually rank up in society, so let's do that. We're currently novice. Now, as a student of the way, maybe we can start learning the Thum? I don't know. I really just... I just want to learn it all. Alright, this is pretty annoying. Can we just attack you in Whiterun? Okay, we're now a student of the way. And we have... Received a amulet of Akatosh. Oh, that's interesting. Let's quickly check that out. Let's see what it does. Monthly character favor and opinion. Okay, one of the sacred amulets of the divine dedicated to Akatosh, the dragon of time. Yeah, that's our patron deity, so that's cool. All right, it doesn't give us huge bonuses, but you know, whatever. It's better than nothing, I suppose. I'll take it gladly. Okay, so finally, the Battle of Whiterun has commenced. The enemies actually do have some strong commanders. Chieftain Kuletra. Wow. An elite commander. A gladiator as well. But it makes no matter. She's going to be defeated. She will, de she will be defeated. Alright, in chaos of battle, our men have managed to corner Griswar. He resisted bravely before he was slain. Uh, he isn't actually all that amazing. Alright, so let's just move on. We have crushed them. Every single flank was successful. But here's the thing. Look at this. We're bringing battle mages. Uh, they have none. They have no battle mages. They have just light infantry. We've got heavy infantry and cavalry as well. So just overall, we're so much better. 2,000 men slaughtered. We lost 100. It's not even funny. So yeah, we're going to break them in Skyborn. And that will basically be the end of this war. Yeah, look at this. We even arrived before them. Completely wiped their troops. Even took one of them. Oh, look at this. 
one of her family members with the great bloodline, her sister, the sister of the current ruler there, has been captured. She does have chrondiasis, a magical dece disease. She's strong though, child of a concubine, master warrior, and depressed. All right, well, she's in prison now, and we will move on to Scarhammer and secure this for us. I don't know if these 300 men can actually do anything. I don't think so. So I'm not too worried. So we're going to take attrition here. Total troops. Mm, we could split off in half. Let's do that. Let's split our troops in half and start besieging another province. Okay, and there is a marriage alliance from... You want... Ah, interesting. No, she has a companion's bloodline. Honestly, I don't want him to have that. We have a 16-year-old Crudia with a companion bloodline. That's interesting. I'm going to hold on to her for now. Because we might have use of her. Okay, my son is heir again. Perfect. Does have some interesting traits. Did I... I did not make him join a cult. I'm going to have him join the Graveyards as well, actually. Hopefully he's going to survive that. He might not. But we'll see. I don't know if they also have to go through the pilgrimage. Um, they might not. Alright, what's this? During your wife's recent visits, visit to Gideon, we had a great time discussing the similarities between our people. My wife's recent visit. My wife is visiting different places. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Um, but, dude, this guy is so far away. Like, yeah, I could have a non-aggression pact, but what's the point? I mean, I, I I, just... I guess, but it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. They're too far away to, you know, to matter, really. So, whatever. Also, let's quickly check out Scarhammer. So this is the last promise we need to conquer. And then we could probably peace out. Alright, and... Grom, the younger, has become an experienced warrior. Good for him. And he is heir to the county of Grops Ford. Let's have him join the Companion Society, actually. And one of our companions... Oh, that was Dokara's husband. He finally died. Um, but that's fine. You already made their child a vassal, so it's all good. Alright, so this has been taken. And what is our war score? We control Skarhammer, so now we get the ticking war score in our favor. Perfect. Let's get our troops all together here. Unite them, and we have to probably fight another battle here. Alright, the cat has a new rabbit. A group of unknown cultists have appeared in the province of Highgate. Okay, we'll deal with them. Our Magister will, anyways. And we do need a new general lead in that flank. Thorin, please do your duty. We'll wait for them to arrive. And we'll crush him. And this woman... Wade. Invoker Aina of Felglow has usurped the Temple of Grey Winter. Oh, so my vassals have just conquered the land from... Oh yeah, they have just... We're grown more powerful. Our vassals have conquered... A territory. Good good for them, I guess. And you are now in at peace. And they would actually agree to become our vassal as well. Look at how many titles he has. That's so crazy. And once he agrees, look at this. We can ask him to become our vassal. He should accept. This dude should accept as well. Yes. Look how many thanes have just become our vassals. Like, that's, that's one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven provinces that we are just gaining like that without having to fight for it. Just because the king of Hafingar is just weak and unable to defend his people, we get to we get to uh, benefit from that. Wow, we're just growing so much stronger. Awesome. And we can press a claim of the minor kingdom of Evermore. Which is... 
all the way over there. Okay, that's too far away. I don't care about it, but still quite interesting. All right, let's... Uh, I don't know how they escaped. They somehow managed to escape us. I'm gonna go and follow them to deep wood. It has come to my attention that Thane Halavor of Unstuntal is a vampire. Oh, that's not good. Um, who was caught preying on the lands and people of the realm. My court is asking me how I shall proceed. Uh, he must be punished. Yeah, he must definitely be punished for being a vampire. A pre... pre preter... preternatural being. What does that mean? Commonly believed to be a reanimated corpse, which consumes the blood of sleeping persons at night, thralls, and other victims. Vampires of Tamriel are undead, diseased persons who are hated, hunted, and misunderstood by the living. Whether they consider themselves cursed or blessed, or whether they have given into their animalistic instincts, or have sought to get rid of the rid the world of the disease, vampires are nonetheless considered abominations. Yeah, so uh, I think he needs to be imprisoned. He will be imprisoned. I find it interesting that he's actually accepted to become a vassal, but turned out to be a vampire. I think we just have to execute him. Yep. Now, I don't know if his son is also a vampire. I don't know if that, like... I don't know how that works. But apparently he doesn't care that we killed his father. So that's good. That's really good. Anyway, can we please catch them? Okay, we finally did. And I think this will be the end of the war here. The last and final battle. Alright, they lost another 900 men with a 100% peace. There you go. Let's end it. And apparently we took over all of these titles personally. Very interesting. Alright. Well, let's first get our troops home. What are you guys doing? There's some war going on. Alright. Okay. So vassals are fighting wars. And we have the wrong domains. Now, can I give you some titles? I think I can. I can give you... You wanted to be a... Yeah, you took the vows. You're a monk. You're part of the Ancestor Moth. Now, this is a tribe. This is a tribe. And this is... A, oh, basic mage school. Interesting. Um, yeah, this is just some temple, right? But we can actually hold on to the temple, interestingly. Oh, academy. That's an academy. Ah, okay. But we cannot hold on to the tribal. Can I... What can I do to... Uh, convert provincial culture? Ah, okay. We can change the culture. Um, how do I... How do I turn feudal realms into uh, I mean tribal realms into feudal realms I don't know actually but I guess I'm going to find a way to do that off camera because we've already reached the end thank you guys so much for watching so far I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you next time